Hey, human geographers, we are moving on to 6.5. We're looking at the internal structure of cities. So we are actually splitting this objective up into two different videos. This first one is going to be focusing on uh, US cities and the way that they have developed. So uh, for this objective, you need to be able to explain the internal structure of cities using various models and theories. So we're gonna go over those models and theories today. Um, Things that are useful for explaining these internal structures include the Burgess concentric zone model, which should sound familiar to y'all, um, the Hoyt sector model, the harris ullman multiple nuclei model, the galactic model, and bid rent theory. So we're going to start off here. So what impacts the spatial development of a city? So here we're looking at geographic thinking, we're using spatial thinking, and asking ourselves, why do cities look the way that they do? So bid rent theory, this underlying concept should be familiar from the previous unit. So um, similar to von Thunen's basic theories, we have something called bid rent, bid rent theory as well. So essentially the value of land is influenced by its distance from the market or the city center, which is also called the CBD. So when you see CBD, think of central business district. So just like in Van Thunen's model, that city center, that market area, um, land was the most expensive and the moving outward less expensive. So we see that reflected here in this graph. Um, and overall, the most desirable and accessible land is near the central business district and costs the most money. <clears throat> the least desirable and accessible land is located the furthest from the central business district and costs the least money. Sorry guys, Addie's being a little whiny, a little whiny bear again today. Um, and then also useful to explain the structure of cities, we have the closest to the city center are the businesses and stores. So they're the ones that are able to make profits and they need to be available and centrally located so that way their customers can access them. Um, we have manufacturing, warehouses need space and access to transportation services. So in some of the models, we're gonna see how um, transportation networks are, are important, and then also where residences are located as well. So in this first one, this is called the Burgess concentric zone model. Um, so this is what it looks like right here, very reminiscent of Von Thunen's model. So this is based on the development of Chicago in the 1920s, and essentially these concentric rings are used to talk about each different land pattern, land use pattern. So in this first ring right here, we have the central business district or the CBD. Um, basically, that's the main part of the city where most of the um, economic activity happens, and that's the most expensive. Then in the second ring right here, that's called the zone of transition. So we'll see some factories and maybe some um, industrial businesses as well. Um, in this zone, we might see some low income apartments, um, low income because nobody wants to be next to a factory, right? So typically that um, value of land is a lot less. <clears throat> and then in this third ring right here, we see working class housing, again, with that concept of, you know, the closer you are to manufacturing, the closer you are to factories, the less value your land will have or your housing will have. So in some of these areas, we see some high populate, population density and poor living conditions as well. Um, and then out in zones four and zones five, um, further away from the central business district. So the cost of land is less, right? It's less expensive. Also, people are then able to buy larger plots of land, uh, which means that there's more space in between houses, so lower population density. And this is where you start to see single family homes. So um, because of transportation um, technologies, people are able to commute into the city for work and then out um, of the city to get to their homes. So you can kind of think of this area as like being suburbanized. <clears throat> so then we have the sector model or the Hoyt sector model. You might not always see it with the name in front. Um, so this was based on improving this idea of the concentric zone model. And basically these sectors are wedges that you see here, almost like little pie slices coming out from the middle. Um, that's what's used to classify the different land patterns. So essentially these sectors develop along transportation routes. So essentially going from the center of the city outward. 
Um, low income housing develops surrounding industry and major transportation routes. So like I had mentioned earlier, around uh, factories and warehouses, usually that cost of land um, is a lot less expensive for living. So here in the middle, we have the CBD. Um, then in the going out from the center, uh, we have zone two, which is wholesale and light manufacturing. And then around those two, kind of buffering it, right? Zone three, we have lower class residential housing. And then the middle and high income housing develops further from the city center and also further from the manufacturing. So that way they don't have to deal with traffic, pollution, all those other inconvenient things. Um, so then here we see this in four and five. So around here, we also see lower income housing as well. So that's the sector model. Then we have the Harris and Ullman multiple nuclei model. Sometimes you'll just see it as multiple nuclei model. Um, so basically cities develop around multiple focal points and build outward to create a functional region. <clears throat> you should remember that from unit one functional region. Site and situational factors include land use patterns. So here in this example, this is a nuclei uh, model right here. CBD remains an important part of the city, but there are other smaller business districts. So here we have um, the main CBD right here, right? The main central business district. We also have manufacturing and industry located near transportation routes. So that way shipping is easier. Um, getting goods out of those um, uh, manufacturing zones is a lot easier. Uh, similar businesses locate near to each other to take advantage of labor pools, suppliers, and communication. And then also middle and high income housing develops further away from the city center and industry. So again, same reasoning, they don't wanna be next to factories. Um, so here we have the CBD. Um, and then this one right here, same color, is a smaller business district or a sub business district um, developing independently. <clears throat> and this one notice is in the middle of um, middle and upper uh, income residences. So you can kind of guess that this business district will probably have uh, more expensive stores and maybe more specialty or luxury goods. Um, then we have the wholesale and light manufacturing right here, still accessible to the central business district. Um, then the lower income housing right here in three surrounding that um, manufacturing and then heavy manufacturing that's definitely located a lot further away but we'll still touch and buffer some of the lower income housing. And then here we have the industrial suburb located outside of the city. <clears throat> then we have the galactic city model. So that's just a fun name. This one's the most modern one um, developed in about the 1980s. And again, taking the, these ideas of um, urbanization, this focuses on decentralization and suburbanization of urban environments. So kind of talking about that occurrence of people moving outside of the city center because of transportation networks. So as suburbanization and ownership of cars increase starting in the 50s, urban areas start to develop differently and start to um, look a little bit different, right? So this idea of edge cities, which we've already covered in this unit, um, these are kind of like little mini CBDs. So these smaller um, business districts that we see that have shopping, entertainment, offices, everything that you might need, um, but those are located along primary transportation routes. So here in this model, we have the 2D version and then the 3D version right here. We have the central city, the CBD, then we have suburban residential area around it, some shopping mall plazas located um, in different parts of the city. Then we also have further away an industrial district. Um, then we have an office park. So again, businesses kind of clustering in the same area. <clears throat> um, service centers, airport complex, again, further outside of the city. So this is definitely um, taking into account transportation networks. So that's the main idea from this galactic city model. So what is the point overall? These models help us understand how cities develop in the US over time, and then also why cities develop in these different spatial patterns. And the biggest takeaway you all should have is that transportation innovations has helped to dictate the way that these cities have developed over time. So that's it for this part one. I will see you guys in